Hi everyone, thanks for joining today's session. I'm Neha Kicharya and today I'll be talking about how do we build the payment products into a marketplace. So before we get started, a little bit about myself. I've done my graduation in electrical engineering and I've got a total overall experience of 13 plus years where majority of my experience lies into payments and fintech domain. As a part of my current role at eBay as a senior product manager, I work on to the managed payments platform, which is a continuous attempt from our side to make sure there is a seamless and a very smooth payment experience from buyer and seller perspective. Few of the earlier companies where I've worked with, um, prior to eBay, I was working with PayPal, where I focused mainly onto the finance transformation project. And later part, I moved on to the product owner area for the finance product from middle office integration perspective, where I worked with lots of marketplace integration, new bank and vendor processor, integration partnership, launch into the new areas, tax projects, as well as certain key uh, partnership with one of the few and the topmost um, social media companies. Uh, my earlier role spread across SAP developer and analyst role uh, in my earlier phase of the career where I was more focused on the development side of SAP platform. And the, if you look at my career transition, it started from the software developer to analyst to product owner to the product PM. So that had been my journey. And um, what I'm really passionate about at this point of my career is to build strong and robust payment product, which actually can enable and smoothen the life of millions of sellers, buyers, sender, receiver. And also, I strongly believe in the power of data analysis. And I love digging the data and build, the, build my hypothesis around the same. So before we get started, let's just go through the agenda and the key points which I'll be talking today. So some of the key areas where, where I'll be throwing some light on would be the basic concept about e-commerce marketplace. What do they actually mean? Uh, what is the significance of payment in e-commerce? How do we build payment products? What is a stakeholder management and how do you actually handle your day-to-day -day engagement with your stakeholder and partners? And what are the key areas from my perspective to actually excel in the day-to-day -day cadence as a product PM in the PM role. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, let's just go a little bit basic about what is an e-commerce and why is it being used? What is the significance of it? Um, whenever there is a term of online shopping, this word and terminology is very commonly used about e-commerce platform. What I want to actually showcase in this particular slide and talk about is electric, Electri electronic commerce or e-commerce actually refers to buying and selling online. Any form of business transaction which is done online is falling under e-commerce. Now, one distinct feature which kind of uh, is unknown to most of us is an e-commerce doesn't necessarily mean a seller, sellers and a buyer group. E-commerce mainly signifies whenever there is one seller or a one vendor who has different list of items listed online and then there's a group of buyer who buys it there. A plain example would be a Nike store where they have their online nike.com where they have hundreds of sneakers and shoes. And then as a buyer, you just go and do a checkout. So that is something which will fit under that e-commerce definition. Next, going to marketplace. What is a marketplace? Marketplace, in a very simple term, is a market of the current world where uh, there's a group of sellers, there's a group of buyers, there, there's a one single common platform where there's a listing from multiple sellers. And then as a buyer, you just go browse the items, go through the stuff, you like something, you go check out, and then you just complete your transaction. And then in the next few days, you receive your merchandise. So that's pretty much what a marketplace in a, in a very high level and a very simplistic term means about. Now, very commonly, the marketplace and e-commerce are used interchangeably, very frequently. Um, and with these slides, I just wanted to make sure that we know the distinction of 
and e-commerce versus a marketplace. Um, to name a few, some of the in the in the screenshot below, there are some of the key common, most popular marketplaces, including eBay, which uh, makes it more exciting for me to uh, present this topic here because eBay is the oldest marketplace known and one of the oldest marketplaces which was invented. So that's uh, about the marketplace and the e-commerce distinction. In the next slide, let's just talk about what are the type of transaction. And when we talk about an online transaction, what are the different categories by which these fall under? So broadly, there are four key types of transaction or a mode of, I would say, uh, different type, some, some um, places might call it four types of e-commerce, some might call it the four types of transaction, but then ultimately these are, key these are the key terminologies which are being used when you want to denote the mode of the transaction or the business model. So the first one is B2B, if you will, or business to business. What it actually means is when the seller party and the buyer party, they both belong to an organization or an enterprise. Simplistic example would be, I might be, the seller might be like a small factory owner who actually manufactures like a metal bolt, and the buyer could be a car manufacturing company who actually wants thousands and um, hundreds of thousands of those bolt who actually buys that from the small time factory owner. So that is a classic B2B example. The second one is a B2C or business to consumer, which is the most commonly used mode of counterparties in under the payment model in the online uh, transaction model and where one party is your organization or merchant or a vendor and the other party is the consumer so that is the b2c where and say for simple example would be me being a buyer going to an online uh, marketplace and then searching for a camera i got it from say canon store or nikon store and i buy that that is a B2C transaction. The third one is consumer to consumer, where both the parties are consumer. They are not merchant. They are not known seller or um, or belong to an enterprise. They are just consumer to consumer. Maybe simplistic example would be you list a secondhand um, used refrigerator in a common uh, marketplace, and then somebody else one of your neighbor comes and interest and buys that. So that is a C2C. The fourth one is consumer to business, which is not too popular and too commonly used, but it still happened. It's a mode of transaction, which is consumer to business, where actually you, as, as a consumer, for example, you are a painter, you have a um, good sense of painting and you are good at it. And then you list some of your homemade painting um, into a website and then a business wants to, uh, an art gallery wants to purchase that, which is a known organization. So that will actually fall under the consumer, consumer to business uh, mode of the payment transaction. The next, um, before deep diving onto the what's and what of marketplace and how the payment work, um, I want to spend some time and focus on where what is the future in terms of the market capital size and what is the monetization aspect behind the e-commerce or marketplace, if you will. If you see this current chart, um, there had been the values of market capital size from the past trend as well as it's a future forecast for the next three years how it will go so it's a within a span of five years this actually shows the breakdown of what had been the market cap year over year and as of 2021 we actually stand on to 4.8 trillion dollar of market size which is quite significant um, in a way if you see from the dollar impact value but where the actual opportunity lies onto is globally if you see only 3% trade occur online. So that actually opens a huge leap of um, growth potential to actually dive into this area and explore the market where the presence of online uh, shopping experience is pretty low and then where people are still learning to adapt for the concept of online shopping. So there's a huge potential for this area to actually be having more growth and more um, future prospect into lots of countries where it's not actually have a very significant or dominant presence. The next, um, I want to talk about why payment is important. When we talk in terms of marketplace or online shopping experience, why is it payment important? The reason it is important is because one of the significant reason is when you're talking about uh, 
transaction and online transaction for many of the sellers specifically in the context of marketplace this is their livelihood this is their bread and butter in terms of that's how when they are being paid out that's when they actually run their houses that's what their mode of living is and any glitch or any kind of discrepancy or failure or latency onto the payment model actually impacts the monetization aspect not from just from the seller perspective but from the buyer perspective it gives an unpleasant experience from the buyer checkout perspective from a seller perspective if the transaction is not completed successfully that means that item is not being sold and then he cannot actually make money out of it and from the organization perspective you are not actually catering a good sense of customer experience a buyer experience and a seller experience and this is not just related to marketplace it's even outside of marketplace if you talk in terms of digital wallet or peer to peer money transfer even from that perspective if somebody wants to send some funds to a friends or a family if that online transaction is not completed if that payment is not completed that means the money cannot be sent right so that's where it makes it like a collarbone or a backbone for the overall like a transaction model that if the payment in itself is not completed um it it, it is just stuck so let's just um go through what actually is a high level mechanism when you try to check out something on a marketplace what actually happens behind the scene and this is not just limited to these five steps um it might actually consist of many more layers and platform and integration but then at a very high level when somebody tries to check out an item on a marketplace or an online shopping this is what happens a customer triggers a payment and a step one which actually goes to the checkout platform and from there on it gets connected to the payment gateway which is kind of an interface from the psp which is the payment service provider what it actually does is it actually links a communication and constant communication with the issuing bank assuming that this checkout was made using a credit card and then um when the issuing bank actually gets back with the confirmation of uh, the authentication and the capture request was successful and that's when the psp actually sends the fund to the marketplace account and not the merchant account but the marketplace account and then um or uh, depending on what is the frequency of um dispersing the funds to the seller or the vendor deducting some fee some sort of fee or some sort of charges or some sort of um like you know any other miscellaneous fee like any kind of depending on what platform uh, is it being supported with um deducting the fee uh, the money is being deposited to the merchant bank account or merchant's account where they can actually be able to withdraw it so why it is important is because this is this whole payment pipeline is something which is actually responsible to change the economics and enable people to live with a smooth payment experience if as a buyer if i am not able to complete my transaction there is some glitch in the credit card or um i some risk poly, some risk rule are being triggered on my transaction or it is not being authenticated for whatever reason with my bank i will not be able to purchase an item from the seller perspective he's not going to earn the money and from the organization perspective it's just um an um, unsatisfactory way of uh, experience from both buyer and seller so that's what it actually makes it's not just monetization aspect but it's also that um, this is a checkout and this is this whole transaction completion a transaction cannot be deemed complete until the payment is completed so that's what it actually makes it so crucial and important for multiple reasons now let's talk about um, what is a payment product manager what do they do what are the difference between a generic um, any ux ui or um, cloud for cloud pm versus a payment pm so i have divided this topic into two part one is what are the domains where a payment pm actually works very closely on a day to day basis and then at the first side i have actually tried to uh, list down some of the key responsibilities or day to day job which we actually do as a part of payment pm agnostic of the companies or organization or the mode of um, payment that's included in their companies so the first and the foremost in my opinion what i have seen as a payment pm is expected to have a product vision to cater 
the definition of the customer journey what do you actually want the customer journey to be like um, you have to wear the hat both from the end user perspective because in any payment transaction there are two parties involved either the sender or a receiver or a seller or a buyer so you have to not just think from one perspective but you have to like look at from end to end user perspective be able to define the buyer frames be able to actually um, create the interface plan features mvp what is going to be the most valued product um, as a part of your launch do you want to cater a b c d e all the five things which is spread across your one year vision or you want to launch a particular product with the bare minimum which is actually sustainable to make the product go and then you have your additional value enhancement on the top of it collaborate with cross functional team to develop strategic product and feature roadmap that is one of the very crucial responsibility you are expected to do as a payment product pm and which is something you just not are expected to focus on a platform or a portfolio which you are working on but you actually have to holistically look end to end define detailed use case intended for engineering and design uh, depending on again what methodology an organization uses is it going to be agile or waterfall or you have your sprint scrum what not whatever is the mode of um, requirement submission to the engineering team it has to be as detailed and as um, uh, uh, fulfilled as possible in terms of capturing all the different use cases um, the timeline the prototype uh, the mvps what is going to be usp what is going to be the success criteria there are a lot of things the more detailed you are specifically in terms of the use cases the better it is because when it's talking about the money and the dollar and like you know the money moving from one place to the other the better the 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 most use cases can you capture is the better for engineering to actually ingest and understand and interpret in a better and a very practical way work with the program management to communicate project status resolve issues so this is again um not just your stakeholder and your key partners and your neighboring teams uh, uh pms and your um, other uh, like you know teammates or bu partners um you also integrate very closely with the program managers to actually show the health check of your product uh, life cycle right i mean are you actually on track is there any blocker is there any kind of discrepancy is there any discoveries is there any late discovery is there any glitch in the requirement those kind of things you have to very closely work with your program managers to actually make sure that the health check for your product launch is pretty much on the track measure and report on the efficiency of initiative and develop action plans accordingly you just cannot be having one simple goal of launching a project and then not having a failover or a um, disaster recovery plan you have to have like a plan b and plan c so that if go, like okay in a best case scenario everything goes well plan you launch and you ship the project but if not then what is your plan b and c if you if you hit a roadblock what what is your exit strategy how are you going to recover that will it would, are you going to buy some more time are you buying to negotiate with your stakeholder what are the plan b and c always always have to have that handy in order to uh, be able to cover all the all the use cases positive and negative both now the next one i'll be talking about is what are the different payment domains not just limited to these ones but then there are much much more but i just listed few of the domains just to create a sense of familiarity when you are working on the payment domain you work with different type of laterals different parallel teams and platform and domain so to name a few on a day to day basis these are the key teams you actually engage with like again in terms of the marketplace you might have checkout team you can have payout team your gateway team uh, legal compliance treasury tax risk identity accounting billing so every every team every domain has their own specific set of um, layer of platforms and their own uh, way of uh, processing processing the product and uh, launching the key features so you have to work very closely you just cannot say i am working on um, this particular domain so my um boundaries are confined to just this area you have to work end to end what might work for you might actually be a breaking point for some other platforms you have to work end to end holistically with a proper handshake and make sure that whatever somebody is building should not be a breaking point for somebody else um one call out i just wanted to make in general was uh, a payment pm can either own a platform or execute end to end product this is very subjective to the organization and their uh, work model 
Now, the next important thing which I wanted to talk about is payment KPI or key performance indicator. It's always a like a must have criteria while you are defining and strategizing for your product to have the success metrics for your product. You need to have certain parameters where you say that when my product reaches these milestone A, B, C, D, these are the ones which will define if my product is successfully launched or there is something else need to be done to actually make it a successful launch. Some of the key, not again, just limited to, but some of the key areas where um, if you launch specifically in, term, in the context of payment products, when you actually launch a feature or you are going to altogether a new market or launching into a given new country, there are different, depending on the segment of what kind of product are you launching, there are different set of KPIs, but to name a few, few things which you actually check generically most of the times are successful checkout. Has your product launch created a good graph on the successful checkout? What is the latency? These are the numbers and the parameters which you actually defined, like has the latency drop? Are you talking, are you very interested about the transaction per second after the product launch? Has it been X before the launch? And now is it like X by two? Has it decreased? Has it increased? Has it been stable? What is that which will actually enable me to say that this is the bare minimum I need to launch my successful project? Cost of payment. Has my cost of payment increased, decreased, has been stable? Um, again, as a PM perspective, you would always like to minimize the cost of payment, right? And not just have an overhead cost at the in, in, in the attempt of doing uh, and gaining the monetization from one area, you should not compromise on the cost of payment. So that's also one of the key area to actually look upon. What are the chargeback rates? What is the user experience? Are users happy with the launch? What is the prototype or the beta type uh, feedback looks like? What are the fraud rates? Is it, is it actually enablement of a given product? Is it like attracting more fraud rates and more fraud tagging or risk tagging on a checkout uh, attempt what is a purchase success rate what are the kyc failure if you're actually launching a product for a new set of user like at the time of onboarding are there any lot of uh, kyc failure on a given um, sub user domain so these are the key areas which you actually need to think through and say um, what is that you actually envision to say this is what makes my product success so again, the mantra is always, always, always define the success metrics or the exit strategy, if you will, for your product. Um, one key call out I would like to make is, again, from the enterprise perspective, to lose a customer at the checkout page due to the payment issue is not a desired goal for any organization. So payment is, of course, one of the highest interest factor for an enterprise, specifically when you're working on the payments platform. The next, we'll be talking about some key jargons in payments. Again, not just um, related or limited to, but then these, as a payment PM, you are uh, expected to use certain key repetitive um, key terminologies like TPB, which is the total payment volume, GMV, which is the gross mean volume, KYC, know your customer, FINRA, which is your regulatory um, co role, rule code for uh, the payments. Uh, payment companies, FX, foreign exchange, ACH, automated clearing house, processor interchange. So just not just limited to, but these are the key ones, YTD year to date, um, PSP, maybe service provider, CBT, cross-border trade, KPI, key performance indicator, acquirer gateways. So the, the, these are the backend parties which are responsible to complete the payment end-to-end -end completed, right? So you just need to like know your jargons. When you're payment PM, again, if you're not, too much in depth about a particular domain at least you should be able to when these terminologies are being used just it should just kind of ring a bell and you should be able to relate in what context are these words or these terminologies being used upon the next one is stakeholder management which is um, one of the key when you are actually working on the payment model or a payment industry um, it is very important to have i think agnostic of the type of industry stakeholder management is one of the key area which actually uh, smoothens your engagement and your 
uh, day-to-day alignment with your stakeholder. So stakeholder can be categorized into an internal or an external stakeholder. Now, depending on if your stakeholder are external or internal, there are, I've kind of like slotted into four different areas where it actually helps to make an impact, which is the satisfaction, actively engaging with the stakeholder, keep them informed, monitor. So this four uh, blocks matrix is what I have tried to illustrate on the right-hand side. Um, the first important point is align for a common goal. You cannot work with a stakeholder or any partner of yours uh, with having a tangential um, opinion on given topic. Like your stakeholder cannot be expecting you to build something A and then you are proposing to build something B um, as a part of the uh, requirement assessment. It has to be with a common goal and your common uh, feedback and your um, common strategy of what you actually want to define there. Define the scope of improvement. So this is again one of the key area as to not every product is 100% um, accurate, right? So you have to have actually um, some sort of a room for improvement where it says um, these are the areas which is what is required to actually uh, improvise it going in the future. Setting realistic expectation. Um, it's always important to share the reality of what it is. Build your trust. Um, the trust has to be built from both the sides. And that is one of, again, the key areas where actually you should be working towards as a goal. Transparent communication. You should not be waiting to share any roadblock at the 11th hour of the day to, sh or to at, at the very last moment during the UAT or user testing phase to so say, hey, we have run into an issue. So that's, again, one of the uh, very important point to actually be mindful about. Mm -hmm. Then... Um, the last slide, um, I would just like to share from my perspective and my observation, what are the key areas which actually, if you incorporate in your um, in your work mechanism is something which really helps. Know your product, you're the face of the product. I think I read somewhere like, you know, a product manager is deemed as a CEO, mini CEO of your product. So you should be the face of, of your product and you should know at least the minimum you are expected to know is the starting and the end point of your product. If you don't know too much about the in-depth, what is the code, what is the backend logic of um, any mechanism, at least you should know what are the do's and don'ts of your project, what, what are the things which your product can do, what are the things your product cannot support. So at least you should know Functionally, you should know everything or the most part of your, about your project or the product. If not in depth, excel in the width of the product. If you don't know, again, the underlying code, at least you should know that what, what are the key components which are supporting your product, what are the code area, what language is it being supported with, those kind of things. Stay realistic in approach. You know, It's always good to be very tempt. It's, it's very tempting as a PM to just um, envision something very high standard, but you should also be realistic of the timelines of the challenges and then, you know, of the MVP and uh, what are the core area you want to focus against? What are the A, B, C, D, E different areas you want to overload your product launch with? Data and statistics always, always, always help. Always base your hypothesis based on the numbers and charts and everything. Build trust with the customer, prioritize the goal. You might have to do 20 items in your pipeline for the next six months or a quarter, but then you have to prioritize into what are the P0, P1, P2, what are the must have, what are good to have, those kind of buckets so that it's easier for prioritization and work with your stakeholders and engineering to actually facilitate and accommodate that. And to end pay payment ecosystem, not just end users. So as at this point, uh, just don't be focused upon your particular domain or area, but you have to think again from end to end perspective, that is really helpful. Regulatory and legal compliance. When you actually work on people's money and when you're responsible for moving the funds, you are heavily and, and, and deeply um, expected to be, um, you know, compliant with regulators and uh, legally you are expected to be compliant. So make sure any decision you take is actually vetted with your counterparts in the legal team and the regulatory team. So these are the key areas which I have found very helpful um, when, I, when I have been incorporating in my um, day-to-day -day, uh, work mechanis uh, mechanism and I thought um, this would be good to share because that is really helpful and uh, I, have, I have really seen a difference by incorporating that. So with that, um, this is pretty much about my time today and uh, that's pretty much what I intended to cover in today's session. I hope you were benefit benefited a bit um, from this demonstration and I hope you liked it. 
if you have any comment question just feel free to reach out to me on my linkedin profile i can search with my name and this is my linkedin so thank you so much um stay safe and uh, hope to talk to you later thank you bye bye